I feel like I'm a broken record at this point because this past week on the podcast, I had interviewed Keith Wheeler and I expressed how I'm in a very unique position with the show here in self-publishing with Dale as well as the podcast. And so I've had the privilege of working with some fantastic people and no exception with the gentleman I'll be talking to today, Robert G. Culp. He actually was the first ever guest of the Book Rescue Show. Not to be confused, though, with the pilot, we did have Thomas A. Bradley, and he will be coming to the show relatively soon. But we just got done launching the Book Rescue finale. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out the video series, I highly recommend you go over to bookrescueshow.com to get more details. In the meantime, I think it'd be kind of cool to hear Robert's take on the business of writing and publishing, his mindset, and how he has just an absolute unbreakable spirit Without any further ado, let's get to that interview. So it was roughly, gosh, almost like nine months ago, I think it was, July last year that we officially got connected, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. So how how has it been? This has been a crazy ride for both you and me. Oh, yeah, it has definitely been a roller coaster, but in a really good way. Yeah. I, I just have had a lot of fun. I've learned a lot in the process, and it has been something where I can just where every time we're working, I was getting up every day going, oh man, I can't wait to get started on this, can't wait to get started on that. So it has been a whole lot of fun. I, it's been hard work, but it's been fun the whole step of the way. Yeah, what were some of the challenges that you know we ran into? I know we shared some of them uh, through like the whole journey of Book Rescue. Share what you personally kind of went through over the past year. The hardest thing that I was going through at the time, as, I'm, as you and a lot of um, the viewers on YouTube know, my dog scooby had been diagnosed with cancer at the time mm -hmm. so i was having to be up late at night with him because my mom would usually take the morning shifts with him and i would take the night mm -hmm. and i would be up late at night with him he was going through a hard time um like he just kept getting worse and worse but i was trying to make it as easy for him as i could and meanwhile we had just started getting into full swing and i remember one of the hardest things for me to learn at the time was actually having to do the keyword research mm, yeah i was having to use google charts for the first time and go back and i'm and i'm sure as you can definitely testify that i do not factor in usually with the marketing with math and everything as well mm -hmm. as i probably should i'm much better on a creative side yeah. But I definitely loved learning about it. It's very an intriguing and interesting work. It was just never my strong suit. So when that was compared with that, at the time, it was a very difficult time. I was stressed out. Um, and it definitely helped, though, to stay busy. Mm -hmm. Even though it was kind of stressful, I was still having a good time learning what I could. It was good. It was kind of like an escape almost yeah. from everything else where I was like, I may not be out of control and really help and fix what's going on with him, but I'm just keep him comfortable, let him know I love him. But I looked at it this way, I can at least work on this and if and if hopefully, you know, if he makes it, this can help pay for treatment or whatever I can find for him. Yeah. Even though that didn't work out, it was still a goal to strive for yeah. and it still helped me. It was stressful, but I really enjoyed that little escape and also striving for something to shoot for, even if it didn't wind up where I could help him, it was still something that kept me motivated and kept me going, even in a very difficult time. That's really awesome. So you found your purpose. Have you found that your purpose has shifted at all since Scooby passed? In a way, yeah. It's not so much as being worried about, you know, helping him. It's still... but different things fuel your goals even after you lose someone you care about yeah. they never really leave you or the fact of how it felt when they lost i still spend a lot of nights having a hard time falling asleep after everything that um you know i went through with him and um i've lost a lot of people i've loved over the years yeah. believe me it's still something you everyone deals with constantly but you find other goals for those that are still in your life that are still living my mom actually has a saying she's lived by for years that she's always passed down to me. Yeah. We can't do things for those who have already passed. So the best thing you can do is do the things for the people who are still alive in your life and show them. Cause after someone has passed away, there's something you can do for them and you just regret what you could have done for them while they were alive. Oh my God, dude, so that's gold. I'm telling you like there's uh, there it, during the whole book rescue, like screening process, you know, we, we've, gotten dozens of applications and you're the reason why I liked you and I thought season one would work really well and if, it wasn't just me because we have a whole team that vets that out 
Um, but we all fell in love with you because of your positive attitude, despite some of the odds being stacked against you. What keeps you so positive, man? Because, I mean, it sounds to me like you get a veritable poop sandwich on a regular basis, but you seem to really not be bothered by that. Well, well, just daily dose of my life, it's always constantly, how much can I stretch money to pay for bills this month? How can I, am I going to be kicked, are we going to lose our home this month, or are we not going to be able to pay utility bills? And constantly having to deal with, you know, government assistance programs that, so we can keep things going and different legalities of all that. And it's definitely a struggle always to work and strive for all that. Yeah. But I find if you focus just on all the negative, you're either going to wind up killing yourself either over mental duress and mental stress, which I, you know, granted, I do have a few mental stress and disorders at times, yeah. you know, granted from previous histories and stuff, mm -hmm. but or you'll die like from a heart attack and I've had high blood pressure and stuff. I mean, like even my mom, she was where she was having a stroke yesterday and we were trying just to get insurance or insurance cards in because since they switched over to Medicare yeah. and, but I'm like, you can't just constantly worry about that. Yeah. You keep it in the back of your head. You still try every day because every day, you know, you still got to deal with this stuff. Yeah. But if you don't take time just to think about something else, you are going to just drive yourself crazy or get yourself killed from one way or another. Mm. Because I look at stuff like, I mean, when I'm not, like, whenever I feel writer's block for when I'm writing in my own work and I just feel too stressed out, I'll just go online and I'll try and just write some kind of, I'll write fan fiction for fun of my favorite shows just to goof off because yeah. there's not exactly a whole lot of pressure in that. Mm -hmm. I'll, or I'll look at, look up and watch reruns of my favorite TV shows or movies that inspired me to want to write. and. Yeah. I look at all that and, and like one thing I draw my mom crazy doing this. I <laughs> listen to music constantly on my phone. Like when I get up in the morning and get myself going, I'll play music. What's your favorite? All day long. Oh, gosh, I have a, a lot of favorites. I love a lot of seventies and eighties pop and rock classics. I mean, huh. I love sticks, um, lover boy, ACDC Eagles. I also like a few modern stuff. I, my, one of my favorite modern rock groups is the score. I found a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's one of the things that made me, like, when I'm putting together my mailing list, I love putting together, like, playlists for, like, what I would pick out on YouTube for people to listen to that I would put, like, if my books were ever made to a TV show or a movie, like, picking out songs I put in these, you know, various scenes in each chapter and whatever. Yeah. I, I love stuff like that. If I can focus on things like that, because there's always going to be things in life that make you want to just go crazy or lose it, but yeah. when you have to do it every day... You just have to keep moving and think of the better things that you can get off your mind while still dealing with that. You have to juggle your time somewhat, you know, yeah. better and where you can just deal with it. You know, it reminds me of when I was a kid, uh, I was in a driver's ed class and our instructor on the road instructor mm -hmm. said to us like, yeah, it's a good idea to kind of keep the edge line of the, uh, the road in your peripheral, but never look at it because what we tend to do is when we look at something, we drive towards it. And so it seems to me like almost like that's what you're saying is we know that if out of our peripheral, there's this bad stuff happening, but if we entirely focus on it, we're going to end up crashing our car into that. Am I right in saying? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know how many people watch this, but one of my shows growing up that I loved watching was Lastly, mostly in its original run was Glee, and there was this episode on there where there's this quote that comes from it, where they're talking, and they say, and and the main teacher on there says, one thing that I always think helps, no matter how bad of a day or or week or month you have, find one thing in your life that you're looking forward to, that you want to live, and keep experiencing to see that happen, and and then when that happens, find something else after it, and just keep on picking that. And keep going, and it's definitely been something I always keep in the back of my mind, and it definitely meant a lot to me when I heard that. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I love this. This is very inspirational. Let's let's look at some of the results that you've gotten so far from using Book Rescue and doing that. I think a lot of people assume as soon as we help someone that all of a sudden their business is going to explode, but you've kind of found yeah. the opposite, right? Um, It hasn't exploded loaded by means as of yet mm -hmm. i'm hoping it will one day but i'm very much a realist my, another saying my mom has taught me over the years is never get your hopes up 
too much. Mm -hmm. Keep them realistic. But then if something wonderful or great does happen, you're even going to be happier, more excited when that happens. Yeah. But if it doesn't, you, you're not you're not disappointed in that way. And I've always been very much by that because, as you said before, kind of life kind of dumps on you a lot. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely very realistic about the ups and downs and what can or could or might not happen. Yeah. But so far, I have seen an uptick in my sales so far. Nice. Not much. I have. Yeah, I mean, I've made about eight sales in the past week, which for me, very much so. That's very good because yeah. I, I know I just use very a lot, but so forgive me for that. But um, it's um, yeah, I really just, I'm, I'm enjoying that because usually it's maybe one or two sales, paid sales a month now. Yeah. The perma free book, I get downloads on that a lot. You know, every so often a week. Yeah. But so I've just. Any little bit of sales, I'm happy because it's a sign that I'm heading up in the right direction instead of, you know, back, taking five steps backwards, one step forward, you know? Yeah, that's really cool to see that it's it's getting some good results. Now, as we're recording this, we're in the midst yeah. of something that we kind of had a cliffhanger on the finale. Now, the finale would have aired by the time we have this already launched. So there's don't be afraid. We can say some spoilers and such. But right now we're in the midst, what, day two of the fantasy author giveaway. Oh, yeah. So you started seeing some results from that, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it's weird. Um, Johnny, he did like that little test push. I think it was on Sunday night, uh, mid, in, mid, yeah. either mid Sunday or Sunday night. Uh -huh. And about two hours after that, my phone just started lighting up with Twitter notifications and it's just still doing all, even to this day, about five days later. Nice. I'm just getting, you know, every, like every, probably I'd say, at least by every two hours, I'm getting like three or new followers on Twitter and I'm loving it. I went from having, I think it was 38 or 40 followers to now having, I think I'm close to 200. I took a screenshot earlier and I was having 198 or 197. I think I've gotten two or three more by then. So I think I should be up to 200 by now, which is just really wild because I'm actually following 250 different people yeah. right now. So it's like, oh, wow, I'm actually catching up. The ratio <laughs> start to even out. Following. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to go more in yeah. your favor because, you know, right now uh, Johnny is doing a month long um, uh, Facebook ad campaign that's really Whoa. super, super targeted. And he had shared yeah. with you and I that the first day alone, yeah. we ended up getting 1500 entries which is oh, absolutely yeah. stellar. So yeah, it's cool to see some of that stuff kind of spilling off. Speaking of Johnny, I know you and I had a private conversation, but like share with me, what was that like for you and getting to talk to Johnny? Uh, I remember I was really nervous. I know you had told me, you know, oh, Johnny's cool. He's real down there. But I was like, oh crap, I'm meeting with a self-made millionaire right now. And I was like really freaking yeah. out about how it's going to be because I was like, oh crap. I'm just, you know, you could ask my mom, even if, or anyone, you know, yeah. that I could tell Tom. I was just like, oh, you know, but I finally got on. Johnny very much pushed a lot of the words, because I don't know if you can even tell in that video. I, I was so nervous the night before. I barely got in any sleep. I, at the most, I probably got in three hours. Yeah. Because I'd already been up, because, you know, one of my dogs had had like an accident in the house. So I was cleaning that up. I was nervous anyway. So I was, so I was amped up. And so finally on there, I'm very tired. But at the same time, I'm very anxious. And when I meet Johnny, he's just like, <laughs> it's very hard to describe. Johnny goes, he's kind of like, you wouldn't think he's a millionaire how he acts because he's not snobbish or no. arrogant or just really full of himself. No. He's very down to, down to earth. He's very much someone that makes you feel comfortable talking to. It's like when you're talking to someone, you know, even if it's in a business meeting with them or whatever, it's just like, He's, a, he's an old friend that you're talking with, having a good time with. Because even like yeah. when I got out for a meeting, you know, my mom went, were you talking to Dale? And and I, I don't know, she, I don't know, I can't remember if I told her or Johnny's name yet. You know, she said, and the millionaire guy you're talking to? I went, well, yeah, it was actually went pretty good. She goes, what? What was going on there? You two guys were just laughing, cutting up. I didn't know. It's Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. So, one yeah, part millionaire, one cool. part comedian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love mean, I just, and so I like that about Johnny. And he definitely, when you hear him talk, you can see why he's, become and made that much and why he does have a proper yeah. business because he'll start rattling off everything from the mathematical side and from every standpoint yeah. how he can do everything with that and i mean i'm someone you know i'm not just horrible with numbers it's mm -hmm. just not something i'm just naturally perfect at it takes a lot of work for me to understand yeah but with him like him right now i was like okay okay yeah was, <laughs> and then he go like okay you understand that I'd be like you think that's just one second again like but yeah, he's very much, 
great. He's someone you can ask questions to. He's very, you can tell he's very confident and calm in his skills and very patient with others. Yeah. And I mean, one thing he even put in there while I'm asking, well, I need to do research on this time for it. And he put in like the email. I think you saw this too that I was wearing, but Robert, you are the king of overcomplicated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he said it in a loving way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, just, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm just someone who, you know, I mostly learn from trial and error. I'm trying to get where I don't have to make error the first time around. But yeah. I do like how Johnny's like, hey, man, just wing it. If it messes up, you go back, you fix it right away, and you get get everything. I like that kind of personality he has yeah. from it. And he's just very cool and um, fun to talk to and have a great time every time we got to discuss or meet with him. I learned, I learned loads, too, and it was fun with doing it. So definitely a pretty great experience. Yeah, I anticipate that I'll be releasing some of that footage where it was like a 90 minute consult the first time and then a 30 minute right. consult the, the following time. But I'll probably end up putting that over on the channel membership on the YouTube channel. So that should be a and lot just of fun. I, add, I was freaking out during that impossible task. He, he, he gave that, <laughs> yes. Anyone sees that footage? I was freaking out through that whole thing. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> well, well, share with people like what was this impossible task that he assigned you? He was having he was having me try and get a list of influencers or people in similar areas. Mm -hmm basically that any way I could find that could help further promotion. Mm -hmm. And I was trying everything, but because of the genre I write in, it's a very specific niche slash genre. Yeah. And I do like a multiple different topics and things in each of my books mm -hmm. where I'm like, Oh wait, this person doesn't like this or that, you know, cause each reviewer or YouTuber or, you know, whatever I could find nothing. I was like, and I was on my graduate, all for people that do it for free and do consultations on everything. <laughs> I was like, I was just about to lose, like, oh, I was supposed to get 2,000. I've only got 190, and I only got that. <laughs> right, just, yeah, and you were, you were sweating at this whole time. He gave you a, such a high, high task because he <laughs> felt, you know, when it comes to setting goals, he said, you know, yeah. shoot for the moon because at least if yeah. you fall short, you'll be among the stars. And oh, definitely. So that's, that's, and, and also I know him by now where he's like, done is better than perfect. He feels like you should be oh, yeah. doing something because by just looking at it and doing nothing isn't going to accomplish yeah. much. What were like? Uh, what was some of the things that you enjoyed most about doing book rescue? I definitely. I'm got. I know it's gonna sound vain, but I love the covers. I love <laughs> getting all my books fresh. Like I know that sounds very vain and bad, but yeah. Oh man, when I saw what Olivia Pro Design did, mm -hmm. and I, I loved it. It was gorgeous. The covers. I still love looking at them to this day. I mean, to be honest, Night School and Olympus Rising are still just. Oh, amazing when I look at them, especially, you know, because sometimes you know, when you do matte covers, it'll come out faded in some things. But mm -hmm. out of all the covers, the one that just looked the, the most amazing are still Night School and Olympus Rise. And I can just look and go, oh, man, I love those. So those were definitely fun, especially putting together the, the cover descriptions in the Word Dog. I loved getting to, you know, type that in and see, you know, that everything I always imagined in some shape or form be put in there. And I love that also. I have to say, I loved actually having, remember, because remember when we first got on, I remember you telling me, now, Robert, you can talk about your books all you want, but I'm never going to read it. And I actually love that you you got to go through and edit. I actually, did read one of them. <laughs> and one of the most complimentary things I ever got from you was when he came through, you say, man, I would love to have read this back when I was this age. And I was like, that's pretty good compliment if I get that from Dale. And I was like, so that actually turned out to be pretty cool in a way, too. Yes. Yeah. And uh, still, and I mean, I loved actually, I guess, like I mentioned, where I loved talking with Johnny and getting to learn that aspect because yeah. he's brought up a lot of great ideas that I haven't implemented exactly. I've been doing little things like, if you'll follow my Twitter feed, I've been taking some advice, like putting little dialogue stuff from the characters, little things like that. Mm -hmm. And I, he's given me a lot of great ideas to put in there for future newsletters and posts on social media. Yeah. So I loved getting to work with him on that. And I will say, though, just getting to chat with you and learn all this stuff from you. I was a huge fan of your podcast and your YouTube channel. I remember when I first um, found you on YouTube, it was when you were doing the unboxing series and I used yeah. to love watching all that. And um, I, and I still loved getting to work on all this. So it's been definitely a very informative and fun, definitely journey overall to go through on this. Nice. Well, good. We're going to start to wrap up today's podcast. Cool. I got one cool. final question here for you okay. and it is, what advice would you give to aspiring authors and self-publishers? I will say you can, if you want to write and you want to be in the, in this type of business and platform, mm -hmm. 
you need to have three things. You need to have real expectations. It's a business. You have to put the work into it. You're not just writing. You're having to take it under your own wing. You have. You can always find great sources like you down on YouTube, but you have to know that you're going in for the full business. And if you're going in just to make money real fast or rich and you just want to be loved or instantly getting everything you want, it's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Yeah. But if you're doing it, because it's what you love doing, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, any type of genre, if you love writing, if you have a story to tell, whether or not there's going to be people that hate you or people that love it or just very far in, few in between or anything, if you have a story to tell, if you love writing, you need to share it, you do it, you put it out there. And even if you only have one person that likes it or reads it, you still need to keep it up because if it's what you love doing and you have a story to tell and you love sharing it, whatever you know or love, you go for it. You do it because you're not going to be happy otherwise. Big special thanks to Robert G. Cole for taking some time out his day. Hey, folks, if you want to help support the cause, make sure you go on over again. Visit the show, bookrescueshow.com. And also take a look at Robert's stuff, what's going on over on his website at robertgcolp.com. Till next week, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will chat with you then.